Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for grade five, Eureka Math, module five, lesson seven, homework. And uh, so this one, I actually went back and watched my problem set video just to see what notes I use because I have so many note booklets. And um, I have a different one that I used in with my students. And, uh, and so this is kind of helpful to understand what the concept is. Yes, we're still using the length with height um, formula, but a really important part of today is being able to use what they call number bonds in the common core thing and taking apart a number like say 60 in several different ways. I think in the older grades you might call it factoring, factoring a number down to primes or something, but you don't have to do prime factorization here. We're just trying to get three dimensions that you could make length with height and still get the same number. So that's a big part of today. And you might want to go back to this point in the video at one minute and seven seconds to get a look at how to make 60 uh, as we go further into it. So the objective, still at the bottom of the page, as always, solve word problems involving the volume of rectangular prisms with whole number edge lengths. It's always so much easier when they are whole number edge lengths uh, as opposed to fractional units, which is always a challenge for kids to work with. So let's get into it. So Ren makes some rectangular display boxes. You could say rectangular prisms because these are gonna be regular rectangular prisms. Ren's first display box is, here are your dimensions, six inches long, nine inches wide, and four inches high. What is the volume of the display box? Use your formula, explain your work using a diagram. So we talked about how difficult this is for kids to make a nice diagram. And what I would like to remind you is to be consistent. If you've got volume equals length times the width times height, always have the length and width first so that you have the area of the base together and then the height last it just is helpful like that. Uh, you're going to see it like this pretty much as you go through the grades, uh, upper grades. So when I have my six by nine by four, I'm going to set that off here, but I also have to show using a diagram. So for length, I'm going to have my six and what's my unit inches. So label it right there. The width, remember, I always try to have this one being that diagonal piece going off into uh, deep into the paper. Now, it doesn't have to be longer than the six inches. Why? Because when it's at an angle and it's going back, it's actually going to look shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and label this nine inches and it might look a little bit shorter. Four is our height, so it doesn't have to be uh, super tall. So in class, I said go across, straight, go diagonal, straight, and go straight up. And now you have the basis of your box. The next step is to make your height come right from this point here, the same length or height as this piece here, just like that, parallel to this height line. Now take over here to the end, and I'm going to make another height line just parallel to this. So they're all going straight up and I've got three of them now. That's how you build this diagram. Now how do you close it off? You're going to make a parallel line to your six inch length and close off the front face. And then notice this nine inch width here. I'm going to have a parallel line with that one to close off the side face. Yes, you can label this your height. You could label this your height. You could label this your height. You can label this your length. You can label this your width. So you remember um, the pieces that are in that place on the diagram are all going to have the same measurement, but you really only need to measure one of them in order to solve this problem. So let's close off our diagram here. So I've got my front face, I have my right, face on the side. So what do I do next? A lot of students don't know what to do here and they just kind of wrap it around in a kind of a rounded line. Never put rounded lines when you're making a rectangular prism. So the next thing you want to do is you want to have a parallel line with this one. 
So we've got our nine inch width, nine inch width on the top, and I'm gonna have my nine inch width going the same parallel direction as I have here. So warm up your pencil over here and then just drag it over here. How about the top? It's gonna be the parallel to this front piece, parallel to, parallel to, close off that top. And that's how you can do it. It's not perfect and we don't care. That's, it's fifth grade math. It's not art class and we're not drafting and we're not engineers. So it's just how to draw a three dimensional figure with this diagram and label it correctly length, width, height. There you go. Now we need to solve this. You can multiply in any order. Of course, let's just do our 54, or I'm going to do the 54 times 4. You can do anything you would like because it's your work. 4 times 4, 16, and then we have 21. And so the total volume of Wren's first display box is 216. Check your units, inches, cubed and you're done okay so what do we do next well we're going to be talking about um that uh number bond thing that i was talking about in when i showed you the other notes so ren wants to put some artwork into three shadow boxes she knows they all need a volume of 60. how convenient that that happens to be the number we used in our notebook uh they all need a volume of 60 cubic inches, but she wants them all to be different. Show three different ways Ren can make these boxes by drawing diagrams and labeling the measurements. So again, what we're doing here is we're taking 60 in three different ways and breaking it apart. How can you build 60 with three different factors? You're on your own. You can definitely um, do what you like you can go back to the first part of the video uh, at the one minute mark and see how I laid it out and you can use those if you're not quite sure. Um, but most of these all come out to being the same uh, in one way or another because 60 can only be made in you know so many different ways. So you could do say 12 by five and then I have two but remember you need three because we need length, width and height and five is a prime number so then you could break up 12. Now you have many factors that can make 12. You could have a three and a four. So you could have a three, four, five, or you could have six and two, or you could have 12 and one, but it's really up to you. For this one, you could have 30 times two, moving on to the next 60. And then you could have, four, this is a prime number, so 30 can be made up of a bunch of different ways. 10 and three, let's do 15 and two, just to keep it weird. Keeping it weird. Um, and then how about, let's do 10 times six. And then we can do, you can break up either 10 or six, your choice. You don't have to copy mine. You can do uh, something totally different. I'm just gonna give you some suggestions here. So, um, so anyway, these are some of the ways. And then you basically need to show the ways in here and make these boxes by drawing the diagrams like this and label the measurements. So shadow box A, uh, I'm gonna use five times four times three. I like to keep my length or the piece in front just kind of the longest, it seems easiest. And then I'm gonna do four here and three here. And we're using cubic inches. So this is inch, inch, inch and this is three inches high so you're going to draw your three height uh, edges and then connect and connect and then our width right here are four and then the long top across and that's your five so this is just one of them and five times four times three would give you your 60 inches cubed. Okay, so it, it fits what she needs and that's just one of the ways to show the box. How about this one? It's gonna be 15 and two and two. It's gonna look a little bit different because it's gonna be really short with this piece here, short with this piece here. And again, bring it back with the short, tall, 
or or the height short tall those are opposites but short height 2 2 and 15 and then this is again going to be that same parallel piece that's only two inches and then here's your long 15 okay and you can do your 15 times 2 times 2 you get your 30 times 2 equals 60 inches cubed again and then for the last one we've got our 6 and 5 and 2 and it doesn't have to be this way I could do 2 here okay and you can have six for the width and you can have five for the height. It doesn't matter. It's your window box or shadow box thing. Okay, just make sure that whatever way you're drawing it, you're labeling and solving and making parallel lines that are straight and not making curvy lines. Okay, and again, inches 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 and we've got two by six by five and there's your 12 times five for 60. all right so that is the front side and i hope that was helpful oh yeah click subscribe uh, start saying the same thing i hope it's helpful i hope it's helpful and i hope you click subscribe and i hope this focuses yay okay here we go <coughs> Get the cough out of the way. Ren wants to build a box to organize her scrapbook supplies. She has a stencil set that is 12 inches wide that needs to lay flat in the bottom of the box. So everybody has a drawer where you're trying to put things in it and you've got like long pencils or you have, you know, little organizer things. So the supply box has to fit in the bottom. So the base area of your design, your length and width have to be certain dimensions. The supply box must also be no taller than two. So we have some very specific dimensions we're working with here. Name one way she could build a supply box with a volume of 72 cubic inches. So this is your goal right here. That's what you want for your answer. And we have length times width times height. And we need it to be um, at least 12 inches wide. So we kind of have our must have at least 12 here. Um, it can be no taller than two, so it could be one or two here. So if we start out with our maximum amount uh, already given for our width and our height, then what would be the length needed to complete this um, and it's just one possible, one possible way. So yours doesn't have to be mine. You could have, um, it, it could be 12 here, but it could be a little bit bigger. What if you put 14 or 15? You can do that, but also consider what you need here in order to, for, for it to be 72 inches. So we have to make it equal 72. So right now I'm just taking my 12 and my two, and I'm saying, all right, well, if that's 24, what could I multiply 24 by in order to get 72? Now, if you're not sure or can't see right off the top of your head, what you would do in this situation is you would divide 24 by, sorry, I'm sorry, you would divide 72 by 24 to see how many of these 24s you can fit in. Let's guess a three. Three times four is 12, carry the one. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. Why did I guess three? Because I just had an inkling that was gonna work out. <laughs> okay, so then the length would be three. So my dimensions could be three times 12 times two, and that's one way she could build a supply box with that volume that she needs. So um, you can have a different answer for this one, but the three numbers you multiply can't have more than two for your height. So you're gonna to have to have a one or a two here in the third one. And it has to have a minimum of 12. Okay, so that's, that is the, the size of her stencil set. So you can't have 10 here. 
because the stencil set won't be jamming it in the box and it won't fit. Okay, so that's the parameters. You can have other answers as long as you get 72, you're fine. Ah, finally, the last one, after all this organizing, Ren decides she also needs more storage for her soccer equipment. Her current storage box measures one by two by two length width height. She realizes she needs to replace it with a box of 12 cubic feet of storage, so she doubles the width. First of all, before we go on, I want you to look at this one by two by two and decide the volume. What's it gonna be? Two times two is four. So the volume is four feet cubed currently. So will she achieve her goal of having a box with 12 cubic feet, will she achieve her goal if she doubles the width? So instead of one by two by two, let's say she doubles the width, one by four by two. What's she gonna get? Eight feet cubed. So will she achieve her goal? No, okay? It's just doubling the width is not going to increase four to 12, doubling the four will not get her to 12 feet cubed. And that's the goal, okay? So that's not gonna work. If she wants to keep the height the same, and the height here is two. What could the other dimensions be for a 12 cubic foot storage box? Okay, so if I can't change this, but I can change my other two numbers, what could I do to get a maximum of 12? That's my goal, remember, okay? What can I do for these two? So this would have to be somehow six because six times two is 12. So how can you make six? That's where you get the number bond thing to come in. I can have three by two or I can have six by one. So you can decide those are the other dimensions that she could have. She can have three and two or she can have six and one. So that's the answer for B. All right, for C, if she uses the dimensions in part B, what is the area of the new storage box's floor? Now remember, the height can't change. So this one's really easy because this is the length times the width. We're not really concerned about this part right now because if I use a three by two, that's gonna be six feet square. And if I do, the six by one, not that I'm gonna do this right now, I would have six feet square. So the area of the floor will be six feet squared. Move my water. Okay, and the final question for today, how has the area of the bottom in her new storage box changed? Explain how you know. So if we look at the original, which is a one by two, that's the length and the width. Okay, we're not, we're not interested in the height here. How has the, the area changed from two feet squared to six feet squared? And so basically it's, it's three times bigger, but it depends on the dimensions that you choose. So it's three times bigger or two thirds bigger than she started. Um, that would also work three times bigger than the original. And that's it. Don't you feel like a genius? That was kind of hard a little bit, but, you know, I hope me breaking it down for you was helpful. Anyway, uh, subscribe, tune in again, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.